Do you remember your last big crash where you planned it, you planned to go big, you put on your gear, and then you wiped out, cut your knees? That's probably not what happened, right? Nobody plans their next crash. So this is why you should be wearing protection all the time. And the one I'm gonna talk about today is the category of lightweight knee pads. I'm gonna to explain to you why you should wear them and what the five best options are according to the MTBR editors and audience for 2021. About 10 years ago, maybe five years ago, hardly anyone wore knee pads except when they were at the downhill park, right? We would wear our helmet, we would wear our, our gloves, but knee pads, you know, not, that's for the other guys. But really, mountain biking has evolved into a much more structured discipline, better bikes, better components suitable for the sport that we do. And so the bikes are more capable, we're doing much better terrain, but also we have much better technology now for knee pads, specifically the lightweight knee pads. Remember these things? So whenever I went to the DH park, I'd wear this strap up. When you get to the bottom of the hill, you take them off because you can really pedal with these. So these, a lot of people still think these are what's available for knee pads, so they, don't, they never wear them. You know, but really your knees are the, your first line of defense. You know, when things go wrong, you're gonna be, you're gonna be hitting this, you're gonna be hitting, kneeling on the ground. And you know, that's why they actually require them in enduro racing, which is really just advanced mountain biking. So good news is we don't have to deal with this anymore. Even in downhill, you don't use this anymore. They're a lot better now. But the category I'm most interested in is the lightweight knee pad. I'm gonna give you the five best options in this category. So the number one option, go right, cut to the chase, is the Liat Airflex Pro. So right here, it doesn't weigh much, but it's, it's the best of the best because it's got this uh, really cool uh, pad. The main pad is big, very ventilated, and it's got a little gripper. For your knee right here and Lia too is molded you know it, it it's it's molded right to fit your knee and then it's got the little side protection here you know you knock your bike you knock knock a little tree right here that that stuff hurts and right here on top boom you hit your stem or something when things go awry there's no telling what you're gonna hit <laughs> so right here best in class put it on Go for a couple rides and make sure there's no binding. So a little bit um, very light here, you know, for ventilation and no binding. A weakness is if you get this caught in your pedals, your flat pedals or whatnot, it might, it, uh, it's not the thickest material. It's optimized for ventilation. So great option here. And I can attest to Liat because I've been using this for about four years. And if you want to step up a little bit, uh, this one is, uh, the, the higher end for from Liat, uh, the Airflex, and it's 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 like a sock basically. So it's a little warmer, a little beefier construction, but it has a welded plate on top, so uh, it prevents penetration from jagged rock. So if you have that kind of terrain, maybe you want to step up a little bit to this one, uh, as opposed to this one, which is you know something might something pointy might poke there. Okay. The next one I would love to tell you about is the probably the the, the brand the, the product that started it all. It's the it's the it's G Form. So G Form has this hardening technology that they have, and what they have today is the X3, X1, X2, X3. This is the third iteration of their line. Everything they've learned, so a lot thicker. Um, but it's still 85 grams. Check this out. Um, 
stronger all around, better grippers all around. So I've been wearing this and it's been really, uh, I, I started with G-Form, I moved on to other stuff, but you know, now you can go back to G-Form since they really up their technology. And if you need gloves and elbow pads, they're very hard for elbow pads to just stay on because your form, forearm tapers. Uh, they have one that's pretty darn good, that's, that's, that stays with you. So the G-Form X3 or X2. Another pad I'd love to talk about is this POC one, lightweight POC with a VDP system. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's uh, not, not as ventilated as light as those other ones. So it's a little beefier, but still a soft pad. You know, the, the, uh, a, a much thicker cushion here. So if you hit the ground a lot, this is pretty good. Uh, you might experience a little bit of binding here, so make sure you check that out. Those are the key things to look for um, when you are getting a knee pad. You want minimal binding. You don't want all these straps and whatnot. You just want to slip them on. And here's a cool thing, by the way. When you, when you slip your knee pad on, your lightweight knee pad on, you take it off when? You, do you put it down at the, at the bottom of the hill so you can climb? No, just leave it on, okay? Just leave it on. Don't touch it. Uh, and when a, 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 a product, a, a piece of clothing component doesn't call attention to itself on a three hour ride, it's done its job. The fourth one I'd love to talk about is for the person who doesn't like knee pads at all, as they said, I'll never wear one, but hey, like I told you, the products are getting more and more transparent. And this one is called a Fox Racing enduro enduro sleeve so it's like a sleeve it's got a pad uh, it's it's got a little bit of uh, ventilation it's got a real pad now the early foxes didn't have a lot of protection this one's got real protection now but it's still minimalist you know it's for the trail rider occasional enduro and even cross country the last two products i have uh, one is the pearl izumi elevate knee guards uh, again it's got the orange D3O padding inside and very ventilated on the outside. So, you know, it's pearly zoomy, nose fit pretty well. So they do a lot of knee warmers. So this is just kind of like a knee warmer with a real protective pad inside, right? This is a good one. And the last one is the Seven Protection Project knee pad. You know, it's kind of a long pad. You know, it kind of holds, holds, uh, holds its place up here, grips to your, your, uh, your liner, hopefully. But you know, Seven Project, they know what they're doing. A lot of, a lot of different pieces of, of molded pads in there to, to protect your knee. And um, something fairly seamless, but will give you some real protection. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed my little spiel of knee pads. You know, I'm a huge proponent. You know, I, I do a lot of bike testing, easy trails. You never know when you're just gonna slap the ground. So always pay attention, always be protected. Look at my knee. Uh, I've been riding a lot with my wife, you know, like five times a week. So it, it was so easy, five roads and whatnot, while I was training her that I stopped wearing protection. And uh, sure enough, I, uh, I hit the ground hard, sand over rock. I looked at my knee, and it was a three month injury. I was laid up for three months just because I crashed on easy trails not wearing knee pads so you know take take a look at it and uh if you get used to it maybe you'll you'll have them on every ride or maybe 90 percent of your rides thanks a ton